I just want to correct you before we start the interview. My name is Sagar. Why do I keep calling you Suraj? I have no idea. You call me Sumit uh, two, three times, and I think you call me Suraj later. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, Sumit, no, no. right? Sorry. Sagar. Sagar. Yeah. I think I've saved. I think Usepa sent me your number. I don't know why. <laughs> Subscribe to FYI Arc and learn architecture with fun. And hit the bell icon to never miss any update. Hey guys, welcome to the new episode of Art Saga Dialogue powered by Infilux LED Lights. And today we are having this episode from a new location. So let's talk with architect Arun Shekhar today from Humming Tree and let's watch a small introduction video about his projects and about his firm Humming Tree. Humming Tree is a creative studio based in Calicut, Kerala for art, architecture and urbanism. Under the creative direction of two co-founders, architect Mohammed Afnan and architect Arun Shekhar. With the team of passion and architects, Humming Tree is moved on the basis of instantly exploring architectural quintessence by measuring projects on their impact as a rational and inclusive dialogue among context, geometry, and visual expression. Their work is branded by its versatility in solving intricate programs, understanding user needs, context, and materiality as a whole. They show considerable sensitivity to time in order to integrate the new with the already existing, highlighting the detailed qualities of the project and the environment. Now let's go and talk with the architect himself. Hey Arun sir, welcome to Art Saga Dialogue and first of all, how are you? And second of all, finally we are having this interview. Hi, um, hi Sagar. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. And um, yeah, yeah, all good, all good. How have you been? I'm good and uh, recording some episodes and here we are. So we yes. saw uh, Humming Tree's projects before we started this interview today. And I must say that they are so detailed and I would love to know more about it. So we'll start with our first segment, which is PSD, Philosophy, Story and Design. My first question to you is your architectural experience as a student and as a practicing architect. Okay. So to begin with, um, you know, my friend uh, and partner of Nan couldn't make it for the interview, but uh, I think he missed out on a big time. Uh, but speaking about um, the, the student life that we had, uh, you know, back then, Afnan is like a year senior to me and we happen to be like very best friends. And uh, during the college, it was merely like, you know, helping each other, different architecture projects. It's like, you know how it is, right? Like a junior helps senior and then, you know, that's how, you know, they develop a whole different kind of, you know, dialogues between different batches and stuff. So during the course of our architecture schooling, we kind of um, developed this kind of, uh, what do I say, a link uh, and established it by doing small kind of projects, uh, say about a product design for like a couple of brands or um, a small makeover of a living room, et cetera, et cetera. So, and that's how our collaboration began. And I think we kind of, kind of gel together the way we express some ideas together. And, and yeah, and then the rest is, um, I, I, just, I just finished my graduation and then I wanted to leave uh, Bangalore for that. I'm from Bangalore and he's from Kerala. And um, he's like, no, why don't you come back to Kerala and just see it's a really nice place out here and all of it. And I was like, okay. And, uh, and that's how I moved uh, to Kerala and in Calicut. And it's like such a beautiful and lovely place to be in. Um, and then we started off with uh, Humming Tree and yeah, and then we started off with like really, really small, uh, just by doing residential projects and then commercial. And then we uh, gradually transcended to the bigger projects. Now we're doing hospitality, the commercial projects and like mansions and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Uh, like, I'm so glad that Uzefa sir introduced me with uh, you guys. And I'm so happy that I'm having this interview, but I would like to know how you came up with the name Humming Tree. 
Okay. So um, first of all, I, I would like to kind of uh, thank Huzrefa as well and Jasim. Uh, they both have been like such a good uh, friends over the time. I think we connected over uh, Instagram. And one of the craziest thing is uh, we have become like pen buddies. Uh, we haven't met at all. Like we haven't met. It's I think it's been four years now. We've just been texting and on DMing on Instagram, and they've been really kind and helpful. Uh, you know, in that way. So kudos to Musees. Um, yeah, with respect to Humming Tree, um, it was um, it was an instant kind of uh, like a decision that we were we were very sure about one thing that uh, we didn't want a you know matchup of our both names that was one thing that we were very clear and uh, second of all uh, we had different names in mind but at the end of the day uh, when we traveled to uh, Sri Lanka together we were in deeply and madly in love with Jeffrey Baba you know the architecture or the interiors uh, for the matter so somewhere this resonated that trees and landscape should be a part of uh, an integral part of all the practices that we do and that's how that we wanted to propagate that through our projects so it's kind of very weird but we somehow came about like okay this is what you need to transcend and humming and, and then tree and we were just writing out different words and stuff so yeah and that's how um, it all came about i think humming tree when i when i uh, when so i hear the word it's very peaceful <laughs> that's why thank you so much that's why like uh, we we keep getting a lot of questions but when they hear the story uh, how did you come about then they would be like uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> no but i think you mentioned jeffrey bauer and the landscape and when i connect the name with that now i see the meaning that it is very peaceful yeah thank you thank you so moving on to my next question can you tell us about your design philosophy okay so basically, I think we are like more in our studio, the way we have come out is with, we're kind of liberated. Uh, we don't have, if you ask me about the philosophy per se, there's, n I can't like name one because for us, it's about being very relevant to today's context and uh, today's time. So for us, uh, the philosophy is something that we really follow is about, uh, uh, something which is uh, something which is true to ourselves. I mean, like at the end of the day, every project that you see uh, really comes from a, a deeper place that who we are as a person and who uh, uh, we are as a brand, uh, Afna and uh, I for that matter, and what headspace are we in uh, stuff. So if you see most of the projects, uh, you know, there's, uh, some kind of uh, fun, there's some kind of, uh, you know, uh, dark side to it. There's, there's always a quirky side to it. So the philosophy is nothing but being very relevant. I think, I, and I think being true to oneself is something that we really, really uh, follow. So uh, knowing about your philosophy, so when I got connected with you on Instagram, so I was yes. seeing one particular project, which was resort and I saw all the uh, progress about that project. So my next segment, which is knowing the process. So I would like to know which is the project which is close to your heart. Okay. So I think, um, um, I think all the projects that we have done is extremely dear to us. Um, uh, so if you like kind of ask like one project, it's kind of very difficult to pick up. But I think the Hello uh, Yellow office is something that we are very close to is because um, uh, there was a time, I think that project came to us around 2018, 2019, somewhere around that time. And, uh, and uh, this client of ours, uh, uh, you know, he wanted a very typical construction kind of an office. And uh, when we visited the site, uh, when we opened up the whole office space, there was this beautiful light hitting, you know, um, the whole uh, the interior space. And, and that was on the west side. So it, it was like an evening sun. And, um, and the client was like, okay, we want to do this and we want to do that. 
and i i think uh, he's like how oh, how come uh, this color or that color is like how can anybody use this color so i was like why not and uh, you know we were like uh, who says this shouldn't be used or that shouldn't be used and we cannot use yellow it's too much overwhelming i said okay we are like okay we are just going to clad like from floor to the wall to the ceiling yellow and then we just got to bring bang on so yeah and that's how this whole project came to existence and we're very happy about it there was a question coming up for you that what was the design process for the yellow office but i think you covered it that so when i was setting up the interview and uh, setting up the questions when i saw that images of yellow office space i was like how can someone use a bright color like this in a office and when i saw those images my perception changed and maybe one day i will also use some color, bright colors inspiring from that particular space absolutely i mean like anybody should be able to do what they like to do and i'm just like confidence is the key so and i'm sure um the colors matters a lot in uplifting one's mood so why not you should be able to do whatever you feel like happy about or confident about and yellow is such a transcending color like you know you just look at it and your brain just wakes up so yeah so what, my next question to you is what defines a good design according to you um i can't really name one because there's so much which goes into making a good design and i would be belying if i would just say Uh, an aesthetic or functional factor is the key importance to making a good design i think um for us uh, a good design is a juxtaposition or the juxtapose of various elements for example say about from the practicality of it the usage factor of it the aesthetic of it and uh, the way the materiality of it i think everything combined together uh you know put it up in in a right fashion is um is something that defines like good design i i wouldn't still confine to a good design because the i don't think so there's a parameter to define a good design it's always subjective i might say this is good you might say xyz and xyz can say something else so for us it's about individual uh, preference and if he or she finds it confident enough to you know kind of use that be okay with it and happy about it and that's what makes a good design i think design is progressive and you cannot put a parameter to it as you said absolutely. this is very correct absolutely you cannot because as designers we all are uh, so unique and so different and so um you know um liberated in our own way and everybody is so unique so and every design that you see today is so unique we cannot say that this is good or this is not so good so i would say that uh, i think i think it all depends upon individual what he or she likes so yeah that's correct so moving on to our third and last segment which is advice to the aspirants so as young architects always need some inspiration i would like to ask what are the things to keep in mind when we go for a material selection okay so one of the important factors that i would say uh, that we have learned over the years uh, for selecting different kind of materials is um a you need to understand the context of where exactly your project is and what is the climatic factors that you have which is so very important i think a lot of we did initially a couple of mistakes that we have learned from is to understand uh, what the climate says in that particular project even though you have aircon and you have artificially you know regulated temperatures and everything but primarily if you're looking for architecture the exterior facade it's very important to adhere uh, to the climatic factors of your geography geographic location and for the interiors again you need to understand the materiality of it you need to understand okay this product has come into existence when and how many people have used it and if they have used it what are the reviews you can just go and check online speak to the contractors speak to people who have already used it and understand where exactly you're using i think context plays a very important role for example if you're using 
uh, X, Y, Z time, where exactly we're going to use, what, what is the external factors which would be defining it. I think, I think that's one of the important factors, uh, I think. Context is the important factor before choosing any materials. I think this will help me as well as well as the young architects which who will see this video. So I would like to ask you again that what uh, materials you would like to explore in coming future. Um, well, we are open to a lot of uh, new materials these days, and um, you know, a couple of uh, things are uh, you know these days uh, because of the pandemic and stuff. We had one of the I'm so sorry I just lost that name, but I'm going to DM you anyway. Uh, so there is this antibacterial surfaces which are you know coming up now because we are like living in the post-pandemic situation where everything is like no touch and yet. Before it was all touch panels, but now it's like, you know, it's not even touch. Yeah. So everything is antibacterial. You just like look at it and you just sense it and give signals and it just comes up. So uh, in 2022 and 2023, we're looking at something which is more uh, relevant where you can see, you can, you can measure hygiene by looking at it and not by testing something. So these are the new innovative materials that we have come across and we are looking at, you know, using a couple of our projects where hygiene is measured, uh, you know, by just, just looking at the surface, just changes the color if it's not hygiene or something like that. And even the touch panels, there's no touch these days, everything is through signals, so something like that, yeah. So this is the first time I'm hearing about such material. So thank you for sharing that knowledge with me. Yes. The world is progressing. Um, uh, so I, I mean, of course, in like coming futuristic materials, all this would be coming up because at the end of the day, the, the world that we have lived and come, you know, come across these couple of two years that we were all locked up, I think. I think it was tremendous uh, for all these, uh, you know, innovators to come up with new projects and new materials and you know and as architects and designers it's our primary concern to kind of push these materials and get into our context yes so for materials uh the material you explained i also followed neri oxman for that and i saw her documentary and that was uh like she's working on some different level for these materials so yes yes uh my last question to you uh, today is when it's coming, uh, when it comes to dealing with a client, what are the basic protocols an architect should follow? <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> Thanks for asking this. But yeah, I think every practice is uh, different on its own, and every city has uh, clients um, who are uh, different, and the way they deal with each clients are different. I cannot put like a blanket rule. Uh, you know, this would work in Mumbai, would work in Kerala, or what works in Kerala would work in Delhi. It's it's the whole fabric of people that we deal with is entirely different. So uh, some of the things that has helped us, I can I can like share with you, uh, especially when we are like young designers who are getting into practice and who wants to set their office straight. Uh, is something that a is to get everything written and documented in black and white like your scope of work and um, your terms and conditions of what your deliverables are has to be listed. And every conversation uh, that you have with clients has to be documented. You cannot pick up a phone call in middle of your lunchtime and then discuss, start discussing other projects. So that's the biggest fail because once you start doing it, the client gets acquainted to it and it becomes very difficult for you because you keep getting calls by multiple clients and you'll be doing a lot of works and you won't have their drawings in front of you and you agree upon so many things and you just tend to forget. So I would, uh, we would always suggest that try to schedule these meetings and try to get the minutes of meetings prepared and then only attend the calls. Otherwise it's, it's just doesn't work that way. Like picking up calls randomly when you're traveling, it's just, and, and discussing about the project, if it's like, Say about if it's like on a nutshell, then it's fine. But if you're discussing about particulars, then I would say you need to be aware and every point has to be noted down. And um, the other, uh, another important thing is about uh, a lot of people have this problem with the payments and yes. you know, not receiving the payments on time. I feel that if a one 
individual try to kind of put across in a very polite and in a very professional way, I think there's no getting away with it. Uh, at the end of the day, we are designers. We are, uh, we are worth the effort that we have put in. And it also works on psychology, you know, because a lot of people hesitate to give their bills or invoices on time. And that in turn, the other person gets like, okay, he doesn't care, it's fine. He's anyway giving me invoice later after a month. So I'll delay the, the payment after a month. So the psychology works that in such a way that you release a drawing at the same date you need to send your invoices and make sure that, look, we have released this. You're, this is the stage of pay invoice that you are yet to be paid. And that's how it works. I mean, like you need to be 100% sure and 100% on track if you want the other person to respect um, you know your business and stuff so these are the two things i can go on and on and but uh, i think for anybody i think these two are very important points that we have learned and we have uh, made use of it i think the first one you explained that will help me a lot because every time clients keep calling up and when you travel it is very difficult you don't have drawings in front of you and it's very hard to explain everything to them and there is also a barrier between technicality. They understand, they don't understand every technical aspect of those drawings, but we do, but you cannot uh, come on the same page due to those differences. And I think those, yes. these advisors will help every architect, every young architect a lot. Especially like, you know, uh, it's kind of very unfair because for us to say anything, you need the drawings in front of you. Yes. And for them to tell some changes, you need to write down, right? Like everything cannot be like kept in your head because you are multitasking with six, eight projects and it's humanly impossible. So always these kind of small changes in the way you run your studio uh, makes a lot of difference. That That is like, it will help us a lot, I must say. So uh, I have... Speaking of this interview, it was like wonderful talking with you. And finally, I'm so happy that I got a chance to have this interview with you. I got to know about your processes, about the designs, you are, uh, the materials you will be using in future. And uh, one thing when I visit Kerala, visiting Humming Tree's office is in my bucket list. I think, I think you should, you should. Um... Um, whenever you are in Kerala and whenever you are in Calicut, please do come and visit us. It's very close to the, the city. I'm sure you're going to love it because uh, we are in the midst of the city, but at the same time uh, secluded and there's a lot of trees, there's a lot of things happening. Just just a uh, warning, just don't come in the summer. You might be burnt alive, uh, <laughs> but uh, please plan it somewhere around the monsoons. It's one of the best time to travel to Kerala and during the winters, of course, that we don't have, but still you know somewhere around this july to <laughs> december is something that it's a very pleasant uh, you know pleasant climate definitely i'll i'll visit i'll plan a trip and i'll visit so thank you, thank you for taking out time and having this interview with me and with the community thank you thank you thank you so much thank you i hope you learned a lot from this video so please do not forget to like share and subscribe